Mitchell. I'm an instructor at the Wing Saber Historical Fencing here at Warlord Combat Academy. And assist in instruction with Kuiper Combat Scola, which handles lightsaber instruction. And I work heavily in body mechanics because I came off of a number of injuries after 10 years of doing sabat. I got injured due to poor quality conditioning and I dropped out of martial arts for a while entirely and then I found out that there was a charity stick fighting tournament going on to support sex trafficking victims and that was really important to me and as I was fundraising with it a couple of people I know said hey teach us how to do this stuff and I said well I'm sort of a pale shadow of my former self and they said well we don't care we know you do it so in the process I wound up getting myself back in the shape and conditioning and fixing the injuries and started slowly writing things up so that other folks who were in similar condition to me, who had been klutzes all their life like I was, or who had gotten hurt like I had, could enjoy actually doing things. And not stressing out because doing something after you've been injured is way more difficult, even if it's something trivial. So I fence and fight, and you know, there's been video clips of me doing that here and there, but I used to need an extra half hour to get in and out of the car. So the body mechanics really counts, because if you're measuring your day by how many times do I have to stand up and sit down, it's a severe limiter on your life. And the more people can change their shape, the way we were talking about earlier, the more agency they have, and the more of a sense of positive power, not over other people, but to achieve the goals you've got. Hungarian Hussar Saber and Fokosh Fencing was released in early 2019 and I wrote that for a couple of reasons. One of which is that my mentor in Hungary, Idan Chaba, is totally my buddy but he's primarily trained as an archaeologist and he hates being indoors which has made it extremely difficult to keep in touch with him over the years, especially since I haven't had the funds to go back to Hungary regularly. And I had a number of questions about what to do with the lineage per se. And I wasn't doing a whole lot with it until another gentleman said, hey, look, you've got to treat yourself like you're a lineage holder, whether you've got you know, a piece of paper or not, because if you guys get hit by a bus, this stuff's gone. So I took that to heart, and I had some private students. And then more and more, as people were starting to teach, they said, hey, write this up. We want to know about it, because we're in Chicago, or back east, or out west, and we can't get to see you on a regular basis. So I started slowly writing it up. And as well, there are some historical mysteries about the history of saber fencing. We have a well-established, deep bibliography for Italian saber fencing. We have a well-established, big bibliography for Italo-Hungarian modern saber fencing. We have a very poor idea of how those schools all came together and interacted. And that's partly because some people died young and weren't able to publish anything, and partly because we have a lot of material that simply wasn't translated. So this book was an attempt to give material to people who wanted to learn it, and also to provide sources to people who wanted to delve into questions about their fencing lineage that weren't strictly documented out of the Italian stuff, because you know, the Cold War made it harder to get Hungarian sources. So you have two different sabers, and the way they move, the way they're balanced, the way they're shaped, very small changes force you to react differently. And whether it's a saber, or an axe, or a lightsaber, you have to make lots of different adjustments, just like you do in regular life if you're taking out the groceries and something shifts in the bag. So if you can master your ability to shape yourself to the demands of your daily life, then all of a sudden you discover that things aren't nearly as stressful as they were before. a big confidence booster honestly there have been so many things that previously like I might not have had the courage to go and try but 
Now that I know I can do one athletic, physical activity thing, I'm more confident in going forth and trying all kinds of new things. So that's been a big boost to my life. Because I just kind of woke up one day and decided, man, I really want to get into the humanist type combat or any kind of sparring combat because it was really, really interesting to me. And it was something that was related to kind of what I was studying. And so I just looked online and I found a reference to their group and I just joined up one day and I mean, it just kind of took off from there. I think I've been with them for about three years now or so. And uh, I mean, I can easily say that it's been really, really life changing. It's, uh, hey, it's incredibly fun. Uh, being able to kind of discover a hell of a lot more about body mechanics and kind of feeling out and all of that kind of things, it really, really changes perspective on a lot of things. Especially for, uh, since for me, I really got into this for more academic type purposes, and it's really, really changed how I go about almost anything that I've looked at. This is an, A is an outlet. Uh, I mean, it's just a leaps and bounds for kind of keeping confidence up and kind of feeling as though that there's some confidence I can have in something. Uh, a, develop, a constant developing of a skill and the like, which really, really comes in handy, such as with the saber fencing and all the stuff that we've been doing. Even with the body mechanic stuff that Russ goes over and that we do and that we talk about, even when there's like a depressive episode or a depressive bout or something like that, it can just be that small thought of, you know, doing some small side-to-side -side sway and feeling something different in my back that I had never really noticed before. And then suddenly something clicks, and then I have that small victory for the day, and everything feels a lot happier and a lot brighter. And it, it goes a long way. A very, very surprisingly long way. It's really nice to see people improving in their fencing, whether it's historical fencing or it's the lightsaber. But I have to say what I'm proudest of is watching what improving people's ability does to their ability to go out the rest of their lives. And it makes me really feel like I'm doing something worthwhile. I'm very happy to be teaching now.